All right. So in this module, we're going to use the strong testing properties of the CHSH game that we just learned about in order to modify the purified form of the BB84 protocol that we saw last week into a device-independent protocol for quantum key distribution. So let me remind you of this purified BB84 protocol. So the way it worked is as follows. What we imagine is that in the first step of the protocol, Eve gets to prepare an arbitrary tripartite state, rho A, B, E, and she keeps the E system to herself. She gives A to Alice, B to Bob, and th this way creates an arbitrary tripartite entangled state, rho A, B, E, where A has n systems, B has n qubits, and E is the part that she keeps to herself. Okay, once Alice and Bob each have received their n qubits, then they make random choice of bases, computational or Hadamard, measure their qubits in these bases, record outcomes, x, then they exchange the basis information, discard the rounds in which the bases were different. Among the rounds where the bases were the same, they choose a random subset in which to perform tests. The tests they perform is that as long as they use the same basis, they should have the same outcome. And then if this is the case, they proceed using the untested outputs from untested rounds in order to extract their final key by first performing information reconciliation and then privacy amplification. So that was the protocol. And what was the intuition for this protocol being secure? It was that, well, whatever state Eve prepares between Alice and Bob, this test that they're performing, checking that if the basis was the same, the outcome was the same, this is equivalent to projecting the state that Alice and Bob share into a simultaneous plus one eigenstate of the Pauli X tensor X operator and the Pauli Z tensor Z operator. And now it turns out that these two operators have a unique joint plus one eigenstate, which is the phi plus state, just the EPR pair. So by performing these classical checks using classical communication, they're really enforcing that whatever Eve did, the state that they share is an EPR pair. Once we know this is the case, we have security. Now, that was the intuition, then the actual analysis didn't quite use this fact. We didn't need to go down into the details and characterize the state that they share. The only thing that was needed is to argue about the min entropy of the bits that are produced conditioned on the eavesdropper. And for this, we use the analysis that came out of the tripartite guessing game. Now, Let's look at the same thing, but now in the fully device independent setting. What changes exactly? So the main difference now is that I am not assuming that Alice and Bob receive qubits, and I'm not assuming that they know what measurement they're performing. So let's go over the setup carefully. Again, Eve is not going to prepare directly a state ho a b e, but instead what she's going to do is prepare boxes. A and B that are given to Alice and Bob. And these boxes take inputs and they provide outputs. The inputs are called theta A, theta B. The outputs are called X A, X B. But now I no longer have a guarantee how these outputs were produced. Eve got to design not only an arbitrary state that's shared between Alice, Bob, and Eve, ho A, B, E, this is the state that's hidden inside the, the devices, but she also got to program the devices to perform certain measurements, but I don't know what the measurements are. They don't need to be qubits measurements. They could be higher dimensional, and I don't know that they're computational Hadamard measurements. They could be arbitrary. What I know is that as Alice, when I put an input to this box, I put it either a zero or a one, and it produces an output, a zero or a one. That's the only thing that I know. All right, so if we proceed with the protocol as we did before, we discard a certain number of rounds and then we test a certain number of the remaining rounds. And remember the previous intuition that we had, this is no longer valid anymore because this only holds if I know that the device is performing a measurement in the Hadamard basis or the computational basis. This no longer holds, so the intuition is wrong. We don't have to replace it by something else. Now, our goal is still the same. Our goal is to test that whatever this state is that's shared between the parties, Alice and Bob, is an EPR pair or close to an EPR pair. We just saw a way to do that by using the CHSH test. So our new intuition now is going to be optimal strategies that achieve the maximum winning probability in the CHSH game 
must use an EPR pair. This is what we want to use. And in order to be able to use it, we need to change the tests that we're making. Instead of just checking that if the basis was the same, the outcome is the same. I don't know what the basis is anyways. What I'll do is that I'll perform a CHSH test in the sense that Alice and Bob are going to play the CHSH game as we described in an earlier module. So let's look at what protocol this gives us. Here's going to be our device independent protocol. First of all, Eve gives Alice and Bob arbitrary devices that she has prepared, A and B, and she can be correlated with these devices. Now, Alice and Bob are going to provide random inputs to their boxes. Let's call these inputs X and Z for Alice and H, H tilde, or X for Bob. So Bob's device is going to take three inputs. Now we're going to see why. So they put these inputs. They don't know what measurement is being performed, but out comes a bit x a for Alice and a bit x tilde b for Bob. Now they exchange their basis information. Alice says which input she used in which rounds. Bob says publicly which input he's used in which rounds. So there's public communication in order to do this. Based on this, they're going to do two things. First of all, the rounds for which their inputs were the same and equal to the x input, these will be labeled, the corresponding outputs will be labeled as are A for Alice and are B for Bob. And these are the bits that are going to be used for the raw key. So these we set aside. The remainder rounds, Alice's input is X or Z and Bob's input is H or H tilde. We're going to interpret this as inputs for the CHSH game and check that the CHSH condition was satisfied in 85% or close to 85% of those rounds. So we're going to check that the total number of test rounds, so test rounds are rounds where Bob's input was not an X, such that the CHSH condition is satisfied. This should be greater than the optimum value, half plus twice root two, minus perhaps a little bit of latitude in case there's noise or errors on the channel. So we introduce a noise parameter here, eta, and we allow our devices to not quite perform close to optimal. So if this condition is not satisfied, the protocol aborts. If it's satisfied, it proceeds. Now, Alice and Bob each look at their raw key bits, and then they do exactly the same as they did in the BB84 protocol, which is perform information reconciliation and privacy amplification as before. So that's our DI device independent QKD protocol. And now the question is whether this protocol is secure or not. So the intuition we already saw. The intuition is the same as before, except that now we didn't know what the measurements were. So we changed the test that was used by a new test, which is the CHSH test. And the intuition we want to use is that as long as we verify that devices perform close to optimal in the CHSH test, then the state that is shared between these devices is an EPR pair. And if it's an EPR pair, in particular, it cannot be correlated with Eve's system. And so we'll be able to derive security. That's the intuition. And as for the case of the BB84 purified protocol, we don't really want to implement this intuition because it's too strong compared to what we really need and would give us worse parameters. What we really need, given that we're going to apply privacy amplification, is a bound on the domain entropy of Alice's and Bob's raw key bits. So we want a bound on Eve's guessing probability. Remember how earlier we had done this by analyzing a tripartite guessing game that involved Alice, Bob, and Eve. And so now this is exactly what's left for us to do. We need to analyze another variant of the tripartite guessing game that in which Alice and Bob perform a CHSH test in their devices, and they don't know what measurements they're performing. So let's look at that new tripartite guessing game in the next video module.